Hey everybody, welcome to No Bones About Wrestling. I'm your host, Asa, and I'm here with Kay Fabulous. Hey. And this is your AEW All Out Preview and Prediction Show. Yay! Yay! Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, okay. Um, so we're going to preview the pay-per-view, and uh, we're going to provide our predictions and... Uh, and we're going to tell you who we're rooting for in these matches. Uh, maybe you care, maybe you don't. We're, just, we're still going to tell you. So, there. Uh, so, we'll start off. I have these in really in no particular order. Because this, this show, I mean, man, it's one week after one of the biggest shows in the history of wrestling. So, this really had not been on my radar. Uh so I I don't know what order they're putting stuff in, and the show, it just feels weird. Um, but we're here, and it's happening, and it's on Sunday? Yes. Yeah, it's on Sunday. Uh, September so, 3rd. September 3rd, day before Labor Day. So let's get it started. Uh, first one, we have a TNT Championship match. Now we have the real champion, not the man who struts around with the title, Christian Cage, but the real champion, Luchasaurus. He is defending it against everyone's favorite little man in AEW, Darby Allen. Uh, Kay, who do you have winning and who are you cheering for? I am cheering for Darby Allen. Mm-hmm. I have Luchasaurus winning. Let's see. I think that... Darby has gotten all of these wins leading up to this so that he can take this loss and it won't seem that bad to his character, you know? Mm. Um, and Luchasaurus, he needs to hold on to the belt, or Christian does. What they have going is good. There's no reason to stop it yet, in my opinion. I, I agree, I agree. Um, what about you? So, yeah, I picked Luchasaurus. Uh his reign with with him being Christian's kind of monster that he orders around has been entertaining. Christian has been a great heel for them. I mean, just the slimiest piece of shit. Uh, just a garbage person is what he has he has played for them, and he is he's been fantastic. Um, so yeah, they should absolutely not put an end to it. Uh, and have him, you know, strutting around with Luchasaurus's belt. So, uh, I predict Luchasaurus will win here. Uh, you know, Darby gets some wins, and he gets some, what are, in my opinion, some questionable wins, just as small as he is sometimes, and I don't think they're going to do it this time. I think Luchasaurus goes over. Who am I cheering for? I'm cheering for Darby Allen to go against the odds and beat the big old dinosaur. Who it was funny a couple weeks back. You remember, Darby Allen said, you know, he said Luchasaurus was sixty five billion years old, and Luchasaurus breaks his silence to to go million, <laughs> <laughs> like uh, under his mask he goes million. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I see Luchasaurus retaining, but I'm cheering for Darby. All right, next up. Uh, we got TBS champion Chris Statlander of the Best Friends squad over there going up against Ruby Soho of, I, I guess the Outcasts are still a thing, mm-hmm. going up against Ruby Soho of the Outcasts. Uh, who do you have winning this one, and who are you for? I am for Ruby Soho, but I have Chris Statlander winning. Um, I think that... Her title reign has been really good so far. I don't think there's a reason to end it. I know Soho's a good worker and deserves a belt. I just don't think now is the time and this is the belt. I think when she gets a belt, it should be the women's championship, not the TBS. Hmm. Uh, I picked Soho to win. I think this is the time. I think she's... uh always there to do the job or to pick up the win, whatever Tony wants. She's always there to do it and do it well. She's reliable and she's good at what she does. And, 
you know, uh, she she does her gimmick, uh, she lives her gimmick, I guess, you know, really. Um, but people buy the gimmick, that's for sure. And she's cool and hip and all that stuff. So I think Ruby Soho deserves a belt. And uh, Statlander, to me, her her reign, and I, I like Chris, Chris Statlander. Her reign has been just kind of meh, kind of mid, as the kids say today. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think taking the belt off her, get it on someone new, I think it'd be a good move. Uh, definitely. So I'm cheering for Ruby Soho and predicting Ruby Soho as well. Up next, we have one of the stranger matchups. Uh, one of the... Uh, a matchup, uh, if, you, if you told me this was going to be an AEW pay-per-view match at the beginning of the year, if you told me this was going to be on an AEW pay-per-view this year, I would have told you you're crazy. We have, for the Ring of Honor World Tag Team titles, we have the team of Better Than You, Bebe, that's world champion MJF and his partner Adam Cole taking on John Silver and Alex Reynolds of the Dark Order. Get your Dark Order hand up. What you so doing? What a what a what an odd matchup. Yeah. I mean just beyond the the odd matchup of Adam Cole and MJF already and their odd friendship and their odd pairing to go against the overall odd Dark Order. It's going to be a strange match. It is. and But it makes sense to me because, like, the Dark Order have been heavily featured on Ring of Honor as of late, you know? Uh, like they, for the no, last, I don't know. Oh, yeah, for the last several months. Because, like, when Stu Grayson came back and they had the storyline going with Stu and the Righteous, and then the Righteous, Stu left the Dark Order to join the Righteous, and so the Dark Order has been feuding with them. And so they're in the tag team division of Ring of Honor. And so we haven't seen them on AEW recently, really. Right. But they've been showing up pretty much weekly on Ring of Honor. Yeah, they came and, I guess, spoiler, we're recording this on Friday afternoon. They win, they, they win the, uh, <laughs> the tag team battle royal on uh, Rampage tonight. So spoiler, sorry. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be a, a strange match. So... Did you say who you picked? I'm sorry. I did not. Um, I have picked Adam Cole and MJF to win, but I will be cheering my heart out for the Dark Order. Don't tell Dylan. <laughs> so she's referring to Dylan, the host of Last Week in Wrestling. We're on his podcasts and watch-alongs uh, uh, quite, quite a lot lately here. And he has a huge MJF fan. Yeah, he's from Long Island. Don't worry about it. <laughs> That's not very good. Don't worry. Up on Long Island. <laughs> oh the God. Islanders. The Islanders over there. We're going to go in there and watch the Islanders game. That's terrible. I'm going to get a bagel and some locks and watch the Islanders game. What about it? You're going to make all the people from Long Island hate us. They're our number one fans. I've watched I've watched on the metrics and the island is the number one spot <laughs> okay. for, for fans for us. <laughs> so anyway... Uh, who do you have in this match, and who are you for? I have MJF and... <laughs> enough, enough with the accent. Uh, Adam Cole. Don't worry about it, baby. <laughs> I like that. Is that better than you, baby? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, baby. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I have them retaining the belts. Are you also going for them? Are you going for the Dark Order? I'm also going for, uh... Don't worry about it, baby. Come on. No. What about the Dark Order? Going for them. I, I there. I may. I resign. I resign my right. Is that the right word? I don't know. I retain my right to change who I'm going for mid match. I may go for the Dark Order. And they may. They may get me in this in the spirit, and I may go for them. I think reserve the rights. What the phrase you were looking for? Retain also. Yeah. Is, you know, uh-huh. The. They're uh they're a very good tag team, Silver and Reynolds, and they, they'll get you going, and uh, they may get me going for them. So we'll see. Do you feel like Cole and MJF should have been served up superior opponents? No, because they're Ring of Honor titles. Wow, that's really dissing Ring of Honor. 
No, I mean, it should be someone from Ring of Honor. That's what I meant. I meant it doesn't have anything to do with the level of talent. I think they're big people on Ring of Honor. So I think it makes sense. I wanted it to be the kingdom, is what I wanted. I thought it would make the most sense storyline-wise. Okay, so why isn't it the kingdom? I mean, that's they what, kind of what I'm asking. They didn't win the Royal Rampage. That's my point. That's <laughs> yeah. my question. Yeah, I don't know. Is think... why the, the, the joke team, when you're trying to do a a, a top serious what's going to become eventually a top serious storyline i think they've been working hard to make these guys not a joke team anymore because they're heels now so they're not supposed to be funny anymore so i think putting them in a big match like this helps solidify that without hurting mjf and cole at all you know i think it's a way to make that help elevate them and let them be seen in their new heel role on AEW, they've only been on AEW like maybe two times since they turned heel. Yeah. And those were both serious matches, you know? A little meat man can't meet a heel. He's a heel, dude. I don't, I don't see it. A I beloved it. heel. I do not see it. Who did you think should have won the, the Rampage? I have no mm-hmm. idea who was in it. Uh, oh, like every tag team you can think not of. Not those was in two, it. is, is my, who I'm saying. I mean, we could have had the Hardys versus... They were in it. Adam, okay, the Hardys versus Adam Cole and MJF then. Bam. Way more interesting than John Silver and Alex Reynolds to me. Hmm. For one. And I, if I saw the faces in the Battle Royal, I bet I could name you five or six other teams who are better. It's just a really weird pick to me. Really. Mm-hmm. Makes no sense. I mean, good for them. Makes no sense to me. Well, we also haven't been watching Ring of Honor, so maybe it makes sense with the storylines yeah. they have going on on Ring of Honor. Yeah, may- maybe. Maybe. All right. Uh, up next, we have a match for the Ring of Honor World Television title. We have the king of television, as he's proclaimed himself, Samoa Joe. He's had this belt over a year now, hasn't he? Mm-hmm. Had this belt over a year, and he is defending it against Shane Taylor. Who do you see winning this one, Kay? I have Joe winning this. I think if this was a Ring of Honor pay per view, I would give Taylor a chance. Mm-hmm. But because it's an AEW pay per view, and a lot of AEW fans don't know who Shane Taylor is, I don't see him beating. Samoa Joe, who has been booked as this, like, beast man. I mean, yes, he's lost to CM Punk twice, mm-hmm. but that's CM Punk. You know, I don't... He he has just blown through any other opponent thrown at him. So I don't, I don't see him losing the belt here. I think this is going to be a, a banger of a match, as they say. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's going to be physical. Yeah, I think it's going to be hard-hitting... If if they, if they let it be, you know, it can be really good. Yeah. Both these men are good. Um, we saw Shane Taylor against Dalton Castle uh, right before the last pay-per-view, the last Ring of Honor pay-per-view, because he was in that tournament to determine who was going to go for the, against Claudio, I think it was, uh, for the Ring of Honor championship, you know. I do not remember Oh, wait, no, it was, it was against Joe, I think, actually. Yeah, I don't remember that. Yeah. It was who? Joe and Taylor? No, it was Joe and Dalton. I don't remember that either. Yeah, no. but, but Dalton beat Taylor for, I think it was, it was I think it was Dalton and Taylor. I mean, Dalton and uh, Joe, but he Dalton definitely beat Taylor for the spot. I don't remember any of that. I don't know if you watched it. I'm sorry. It was me. I don't yeah. think you did. Yeah. All right, so I... Uh, have also picked Samoa Joe. Uh, yeah, they booked him as a beast. He's had this belt for over a year. No signs of stopping. He's dominated uh, his little corner of Ring of Honor, his little cubby corner of Ring of Honor. <laughs> He's dominated it. And uh, I don't see him losing that television title. And Shane Taylor, you know, it's on an AEW pay-per-view, so fans are going to be like, who the fuck is Shane Taylor? And, you know, that's fair, because he hasn't been on their television sets very much. Um, they might even be a little pissed off. I mean, you're paying for this show, 
and you're you're giving me uh, who the fuck is Shane Taylor? Nothing against Shane Taylor, you know. I'm just saying he hasn't been on television much. So fans may be kind of pissed off that he's on the pay per view. That's all. Uh, but it could it could be good. It could also be a a bit of a train wreck. So we'll see. I don't we'll think see. I don't think it's. I a think it's going to be good. No possibility I, I, of a train wreck. I don't oh, see that. Oh, I think I think so. Yeah. Why? I just do. I just do. I mean, these two. It's not like it's fucking Zack Saber and Kenny Omega in there. You know. Yeah. That's all I, I'm saying. I just I don't agree with that at all. I no. think I think it's going to be a good match for sure. Well, I, I think it's going to be a good match too. I said that. Yeah. It has a possibility of, of not. I don't. I'm taking that possibility off the table and throwing okay. it in the trash can, okay. where it belongs. <laughs> but yeah. So I picked Joe retaining. I'm cheering for Joe. I almost always cheer for Joe. He's one of my favorites. I I love him. The guy's great. Mm-hmm. He's great. Yeah. Everything about him is delightful. Yeah. He's one of those wrestlers where every movement is meant to mean something. You know, and that's uh, that's nice. Dalton Castle is another like that. Uh, all right. Uh, up next, again, these are in no order. Just these are in just random order. I'm not. I'm not going in the order I thought the card is going to go in, because like I said, this is kind of a random pay per view. So I put these in random order. Uh, Kenny Omega versus Kanosuke Takeshita. This should be the best match on the show. Kay, what do you think about this one? I agree that this match is going to be really good. It's a contender for match of the night. I think that that's going to end up going to FTR and the Bucks, though, versus Bullet Club Gold, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, I struggled a lot with this one. Uh, I feel like storyline-wise, it could go either way. I initially picked Omega, and I ended up scratching out my circle and then circling Takeshita. I just feel like Don Callis is going to play a part in this. Yeah, of course. Um, and we might see maybe even a new family member show up. Um, so I feel like that swayed it for Takeshita in my book. So I picked... Who are you cheering for? Oh, I'm cheering for Omega. Okay. I'm not going to cheer for the bad guy Me. as far as with Don Callis. Like, sometimes I cheer for the heels, but Don Callis, then no way. So I picked and I'm cheering for Kenny Omega. Uh, he's had a couple high-profile singles losses in, in the last few uh, goings on pay-per-view. And I think he needs a, a win uh, to kind of stay in that top tier. So Omega... Gets the win over Takeshita. Uh, that's that's the way I'm feeling here. It could go either way, though. Um, it's not like Takeshita's not in Omega's league. Like people want to, you know, some people want to play. I think Takeshita's good. He could really use the win. It would do a lot for his uh, his reputation. But Omega could use the win too. It would do a lot for his reputation uh, as you know, staying on top. So either way, I think it's going to be a hell of a match. Uh, I think it's going to be the best match on the show. I don't I don't see anything else as coming close to it. I predict it's going to be a five-bone match, and I don't just go around handing out five-bone matches willy-nilly. Uh, but I, that's, that's my prediction. That's what I see happening, and that's what, that's what I want to see happening. So, yeah, Kenny Omega. Hmm. Uh, up next, we have a uh, an eight-man tag team match. We have the World Tag Team Champions, FTR, teaming up with the Young Bucks to take on Bullet Club Gold. Yeah. Okay, who do you have in this one? I have Bullet Club Gold winning this one. Um, I think... That they are, since they're like an actual real faction together, they're four men that actually go together. They're not just being thrown together. I think that gives them a distinct advantage uh, over FTR and the Bucks here. FTR and the Bucks were just 
not really feuding, but had a big match against each other. So I don't know that they're going to work together very well necessarily. Um, and I just love Bullet Club Gold. So I'm cheering for Bullet Club Gold and, and I'm picking Bullet Club Gold. What about wow. you? Um, I went through the same thought process as you and said, yeah, Bullet Club Gold, they, they're, they're a squad. They, they stay together. They play together. Mm -hmm. They pray together. Do they? I don't know. It just rhymed and I wanted to, to, to get a third one in there. But they stay together and they play together. Uh, so Bullet Club Gold, I, I'm picking, I'm picking them to win. Uh, over FTR and the Young Bucks, I just think, like you said, having four guys who, who kind of coexist like them, going up against two teams who are like really right in the middle of a feud, I think Bullet Club Gold will have the advantage. Who am I going for? I'm going for FTR and the Young Bucks. What? I I almost never cheer against the Young Bucks. I mean, they're they're amazing. Yeah. They're one of the best tag teams I've ever seen. But you like and, the guns a lot, and yeah, Jay White and Juice Robinson, your fave. Juice Robinson is not my fave. He's your fave. Juice Robinson. Yeah, I thought he was your favorite because you get to do that when we talk <laughs> about him. No, he's not my fave. I like him, but I mean, real my my uh, love of the Young Bucks supersedes anything else going on in this match. So I'm going for FTR and the Bucks. But don't you think Bullet Club Gold needs to win more? They do, yes. They need the win, and they need some new members. I, I think, think they need to, like, settle with the members they have first. Like, they're still... Settle in? Like, let the dust settle, and then and then get new new members. You know, like, they it, it hasn't even been, like, a month and a half since they added the guns, is it? I think it's been over. Yeah, it's been, I think, at least two months. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have no concept of time, no, so it's hard for me to judge that. So I still, regardless of your uh, perception of time, I still think the Bullet Club could use some more members. I mean, four is a it's a good, good number for a, a, a stable, a good faction. I mean, you know, the best faction of all time, the Four Horsemen. There's four. That's a, you know, it's pretty good. I like though personally, I like five, five or six personally. Um, then you got you got real numbers in a fight, you know. It's it's a little better than just four guys. I I like it, and you got some, a little more, uh, variety in who who can tag up if you need to have tag matches or trios matches, stuff like that. Um, so who would you add? Like I would really have to. I would really have to think about it. Uh, I've given it not no thought, honestly. Mm -hmm. Okay. I would have to give it some thought and get back to you on so it. So when you imagine them with a fifth member, it's just a faceless silhouette? N no, I just haven't given much thought to it. Okay. I don't ma imagine them at all with a fifth member, except mm -hmm. I, I think they need one. I got you. I just don't know who it should be. Um, fucking, uh... Shit, I don't know. Powerhouse Hobbs. Why not? What? Why not? Because he doesn't mesh with their style. Like, all four of them have similar styles in the way that they wrestle. Yeah, and now you get some variety. Your fifth man gives you some variety. I don't like that. Well, that's just a first, uh, first thought. I was thinking maybe Andrade. That's a good one. That's a good one. Andrade, yeah. though, I think works best alone. Solo. Yeah. Yeah, but he needs a mouthpiece. So a faction could act as his mouthpiece. That's know? true, but I just don't... I don't like seeing him overshadowed by other other wrestlers. I think he needs to be a solo act. Okay. Well, I don't think they need a fifth member, so... <laughs> so, anyways... Um, so you have Bullet Club Gold mm -hmm. winning, and you're cheering for them. Yes. I have Bullet Club Gold winning, and I'm cheering for FTR and the Young Bucks. Okay. So what's up next? Uh, up next. Well, well, first, well, lastly, I just want to say, I FTR and the Young Bucks. I'm very interested to see 
will they try and work as a team? Because if they do try to work as a team, it'll be very interesting seeing the FTRs, you know, 80s, mid-80s, late-80s kind of style come together with the Young Bucks, who are very much, you know, modern kind of tag team. Uh, it could be very cool, uh, very interesting uh, form of attack if they will work together. So that's, it'll be very interesting to see what they do. You think uh, we'll see, like, the Young Bucks do a shatter machine on some people? And yes. We'll see, and we'll see FTR do, like, the BTE trigger or whatever it's called? I do. Yeah. yeah that's I a good so That's a good call. Um, or maybe some super kicks. No, I don't see FTR doing any super kicks, no. no. I mean, like, low super kicks, not, like, super, super kicks. No, I don't see them no. doing that, no. I guess, yeah, Dax has, like, no knees or whatever. Yeah, yeah. All right, up next, we have... This This is an interesting one here. Uh, we have Miro versus Powerhouse Hobbs. Yeah. Two, uh, two big boys going up against each other. I can't wait. I can't wait for this match. I want to see Miro have an actual match with someone. Yeah. It's been like, what, like nine months since we've seen him have a real match? I have no idea how long it's been. It feels like longer than that, it but I have like no idea that, yeah. how, how much, or, or excuse me, how long it's been. Too long. Too long. He's been back for, for so long already, and we still haven't seen him have a real match. Yeah, he's just had yeah. squash matches and jobber matches. Yeah. So, I'm pretty pumped for this one. Mm -hmm. So, I am for Miro in this, and I pick Miro to win. I feel like, like we said, he's had squash and jobber matches, and so he's been a very protected character. Uh, and I don't see them in his first real match against a actual wrestler, or actual well-known established wrestler. Uh, I don't see it him losing it. It doesn't make sense for his character to do that. Plus, with Powerhouse Hobbs, they've been making horrible decisions with him. Yeah. So I think they're going to have him lose here, which is, in my mind, another kind of horrible decision. Because um, he has not been protected as he should have been. Yeah. Um, kind of like with uh, Wardlow, like there's a big guy and they don't know what to do with him. Mm -hmm. Which is like the story of big guys in AEW. Mm -hmm. So, that's what I think. Yeah, what's with that, you know? I don't know. I think Tony Khan favors the smaller, like, definitely cruiserweight wrestlers, and mm. so he's just better at booking them because he cares about them more. Yeah, I mean... It's like he never learned how to book big guys. Yeah, you have these guys who are just custom-made custom, custom -made stars. Hobbs, Wardlow, Miro, and they're, you know, jerking the curtain. And stuff like that, you know? They're what? Jerking the curtain means, like, uh, opening the show and stuff. Oh, I've never heard that term. It sounds dirty. It sounds dirty. Uh, but, I don't care for that. Well, it's, well, nonetheless, uh, it's, it's a term. So this one, I'm predicting Miro, and I'm cheering for Miro also. I enjoy him. I enjoy his rants about being, uh, you know, against God, and he's turned against his wife. And who else? What else has he turned against? The fans. The belt. The belt. He's turned against everything. And he's turned against his watch, wasn't it? One time or time, the conception of time, <laughs> or or his physical watch. <laughs> one of those two things. I must have missed that. Yeah. Uh, I think it might have been, it was, it was either time or just like his wristwatch. I can't remember which one. He turned against it. I feel like it was time. Yeah, probably. He got weird for a while there. But, uh, one thing uh, I think that hasn't changed about him, he probably still likes playing the Vigi games. Uh, so that's cool. But yeah, I'm for Miro winning. I'm very interested in seeing this match because, you know, what Kay outlined, Tony uh, Tony Khan doesn't seem to 
we've seen it. It doesn't seem to be able to book big men well. I mean, these guys, you look at them and you look at the rest of the card and shit, this, uh, well, we don't have an AEW world title match on the card, but I mean, MJF aside, nothing against MJF, but I mean, this could be your fucking AEW world title match right here. Miro mm-hmm. versus Powerhouse Hobbs. Yeah, if you've been booking them if well. If you've been booking them well, yeah, yeah. This could be it right here. And uh, you could argue maybe should be it. And these are two, you know, large physical men who uh, have power move sets and uh, sell well. I think Miro's a good seller. I think Powerhouse Hobbs needs to to work on it. I think that's kind of a a theme throughout AEW. It's one of the weaker points of, of a lot of wrestlers is they're selling. Uh, but Miro is pretty good at it. Coming from WWE where they really uh, enforce, you know, selling. You're going to work here, you're going to sell. That's one of the best things about WWE. It's to tell people, sell the shit out of the moves. Uh, I love it. It's what makes watching WWE, I mean... Think next time you watch WWE, watch the watch the selling of the moves, and then think about how much it it affects your enjoyment of the matches. Probably a lot, um, and that's because they they tell the wrestlers sell the sell the shit, sell the moves. You know these are big moves from a big superstar. Sell the shit. Um, what the fuck do it? What was I talking about before I got off on that tangent? About how Miro and Powerhouse Hobbs could be a yeah. world championship material. So, so it could be, but it's not. And now it's stuck somewhere on this card. Who knows where it'll be on this card. Um, I'm picking Miro and cheering for Miro. I think lower mid card is my guess. That's just rude. No, I don't mean... I mean, that's where I think in this pay-per-view they're going to be booked. I'm not saying they're lower mid-card guys. I don't know. I've looked at this, at this lineup, and I've I've given up trying to decide a a match order. I, I really don't. Like, I think they'll be, like, third. I really don't have a guess. I do have a guess as to the main event, but we'll we'll get to that. All right, so up next, uh, Eddie Kingston... Uh, we have a tag team match. Eddie Kingston, the New Japan uh, Strong Open Weight Champion, which sounds like a belt they made up just to give to him, uh, teams up with Shibata to face Ring of Honor World Champion Claudio Castagnoli and Wheeler Yuta, two members of the Blackpool Combat Club. How can we say on everybody's belts except for Shibata's? When Shibata, is he the pure champion? He's the champion. Uh, it, it escaped me. And the Ring of Honor, pure champion, Shibata. Yeah, I love Katsuyori him. Katsuyori Shibata. It's like one of my favorite Ring of That's like possibly I'm my sorry, favorite I'm sorry, I forgot he had about. it. I forgot yeah. he had it. Uh, it's okay. What do you think about this match? Uh, who are you going for and who have you got winning? I am very excited for this. I love, I know people don't like it when they put a lot of Ring of Honor on the AEW shows. But I love how much Ring of Honor we're getting on this. No, yeah, yeah. Um, and I am so excited to see Eddie and Shibata team together because their styles are so different from each other. And they're like, their demeanor and just like, they're just different flavors, you know, like, and I think they're going to blend well together. Uh, so I am for Eddie Kingston and Katsuyori Shibata. And I also think they're going to win. So in this one, uh, I'm for, well, I'll tell you, for I, I pick Eddie Kingston and Katsuyori Shibata to win. Yeah, yeah I'm picking them to win. Uh, I'm for Claudio Castagnoli and Wheeler Yuta, though. I like, the, I like the Blackpool Combat Club. Um, yes. Yeah, this should be a hard-hitting match, you know. Yeah. A lot of holds, a lot of submission holds, a lot mm-hmm. of strange moves. Yeah. Uh, should be a good one. Might be a, a dark horse candidate to steal the show, actually. What's it called when you go like this? And you, like, tighten it? 
and their heads right here. Wrench. A wrench. I think there's going to be a lot of wrenching in this match. I'm excited about the wrenching. I love a good wrench. I hear you. And they make like the face when they're wrenching, you know? It's good. I like it. So, yeah, Eddie Kingston just continually feuding with Claudio Castagnoli here. Do you think we're finally going to get a... Because uh, they never did... A, a, he got injured with his hernia, so they never did the uh, ROH championship match with him, world championship match with him, did they? I thought or, we did, but I... Or he, did it, he did it with the hernia, and he had hernia surgery after it. Yeah. So I'd like to see him go after it not injured, you know? That would be that would be nice to see. Claudio's had that belt for a while now. Yeah, yes, yes, he has, and he's defended against some uh, skilled opponents. Mm -hmm. But uh, Eddie again, I I don't want to see it. I mean, let's let's pick somebody else. Who the feud against Claudio? Yeah, I, I don't want to see it again. Who should pick? Almost anyone else. Oh really? I just don't want to see it again. Hmm. I've seen it. I've seen it for months now. I get it. Eddie Kingston, he's mean. He's mad. Claudio pissed him off. He's mean. He's mad about that. I got it. I've, I haven't seen, I've it seen it for months. It. Yeah, been it's been a, months. He's been, yeah, well, I mean, they took a break. He had surgery and then he went to Japan. He hasn't been in America. So it's, it's been not, months. If you add up the time before yeah. and now now he's back and doing it, yeah, no, that's it's true. been months. That's true, yeah. Yes. We had a really long break, so I feel like it's it's fresh. Yeah, but I remember all of it, so okay. it's not fresh to me. So, no, I, I'm not interested in any more Eddie Kingston versus Claudio. Like I said, this match may be this match may be great, uh, be but great. I don't want to see Eddie and Claudio for the Ring of Honor title. It's come up mm -hmm. come up with something new for me. And Claudio shouldn't be in a tag team match anyway. He should be defending the belt against someone, so don't even get me started on that. They should have Claudio versus... Uh, fucking... Uh, uh, Dalton Castle. Yeah. Mm, I would like that. They should have that. That would be way more interesting to me than Claudio and Wheeler versus Eddie and Shibata. Can you imagine a Claudio-Dalton Castle feud and the promos that that would produce oh my gosh it would be glorious um all right so so up next um the main event well what i think is going to be the main event what i what i'm guessing is going to be the main event is the international championship match orange cassidy putting his belt and his win streak, which I don't even know what it's at now. 25 matches, something like that? I don't know. I think it's a few more than that, but maybe. Maybe more than that, yeah. 30 matches? I don't, I'm not sure, honestly. Uh, I felt it was more uh, more along the lines of 25, but I'm not sure. I think it's in the upper 20s. Okay. Uh, he's defending his belt, anyway, mm -hmm. against John Moxley of the Blackpool Combat Club. And this one, uh, man, this is going to get juicy. We're going to see a lot of pulp coming out of Orange Cassidy Aww. by the end of this one. Uh, if anyone's leaking pulp, it's going to be Moxley's face. So I'll, I'll go first with this one. I'm, I'm picking John Moxley to win the international championship. I don't think there's any chance he loses this match. Uh... Well, I'll take that back. There's a small chance he loses this match. But I just... I I feel like it's been set up for a while for Cassidy to lose it to Moxley. So I, I just see it happening here. Um, so who am I going for? I want Cassidy to keep rocking and rolling, to keep his belt and keep, keep on defending it and keep having these uh, four and a half... four and four and a half bone matches that he's been producing, because the guy is on fire. So I'm for Cassidy, but I'm predicting Moxley. Okay, what do you think? So what I think is, because this feud has been going on a while, I feel like Cassidy's winning it. I feel like they're setting us up again. They keep suckering me in, making me think that Cassidy's going to lose his belt, 
And then I'm wrong, and he keeps it, and, like, he just keeps showing up with more and more injuries, and then still keeps pulling out these wins. So I feel like this is just another setup. Did you see his promo the other night? His promo? Cassidy? Cassidy. I don't know. I don't know. When he sits down, and he pulls a chair in the ring, and he sits down with with his uh, his bag, and he's like, guys, I'm tired. Yeah. You saw that? Yeah, okay. where he's saying it's like getting heavier and heavier to lift the or harder and harder to lift the bag. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now I saw it. Uh but that also made me think that they're just setting us up to think that he's gonna lose it and then he's gonna keep it. I don't know. I feel like Moxley as a former world champion, he doesn't need this belt. No 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 like, no 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 no. Here here's the thing. When you have secondary or tertiary meaning third belts. I don't know what tertiary means. I'm I'm telling the listeners, oh, not okay. all the listeners, I'm sure not all the listeners know tertiary means third. Uh secondary or tertiary belts. Especially when you have new ones like the international championship, you have to legitimize them or they fade away and become meaningless. Mm-hmm. So this Orange Cassidy run has done a lot to legitimize it. Now we got to take it a step further. We got to keep legitimizing it. So a great way to do it is to give it to a former world champ, a former what three time world, two or three time world champ, John Moxley. Mm-hmm. So I no, I think they're if Moxley wins, which I think he will, I think they're making the absolute correct move, and Moxley will give a lot of. Uh, Give a lot of reputation, uh, a lot of repute to this international championship. And my my prediction has been that Moxley wins the belt and goes, you know, he, he tours Japan all the time. You know, he'll go for three days, just some random week, he'll go for three days or whatever. Uh, so my prediction, Moxley goes to Japan, loses to someone, uh, I guess in New Japan is where he wrestles. I'm not sure what he does. He wrestles all over the damn place. But uh, say he goes to Japan, he loses it to some wrestler in Japan. And then the now this wrestler in Japan has the our international belt, our, you know, being AEW. Uh, so we have to go to Japan and get it. So now that's the thing. Now the belt is has truly become international. Someone from overseas actually owns the international belt. And now we have to go get it back from them. And I think that would be an awesome storyline, an awesome way to legitimize it. And then, like I said, then you have Mox go and get it back from the guy, win it back from the guy, and then come and have a reign here in the U.S. and and defend it, and talk about legitimizing it. I think that would that would be a really interesting way to to show that this belt matters. So is the reason why you said that Drew McIntyre shouldn't go after the international or the intercontinental title because it's beneath him? The reason that doesn't apply, same principle doesn't apply, because that's already a legitimized belt in your eyes. I just think at this point in his career, Drew McIntyre does not need the Intercontinental title. I think he needs to solely focus on the world title. But John Moxley doesn't? It's a different situation entirely. AEW has a has a belt that they need to get some uh some some significance to and they got a man who can do it, so they need to, him to go and do it. I disagree. I feel like Orange Cassidy has brought the significance to that belt. Yeah, he does, and now it needs more. And so John Moxley is the man yeah. to do that. I think Orange Cassidy needs to keep it, and then he needs to lose it to Zack Sabre Jr. at Wrestle Dream. That's what I think needs to happen. I see. Well, who's winning this match? Cassidy. Okay. Who are you cheering for? Cassidy. Okay. I'm not a big John Moxley person. I respect him, and I like him, and he can wrestle, but I am almost never actually for him. But I recognize his, his talent. I'm just not a big fan of the, the style in which he wrestles. Like, it doesn't do a lot for me. And I'm not a big brawler fan. I see. 
So, we've got one more. Uh, it's not quite a match. Or maybe it will be. Who knows? Um, I'm speaking to you. This is Friday night as, uh, as I'm speaking to you. And on Saturday night, Ricky Starks is appearing on Collision. And he's going to lay out a challenge to 70-year-old uh, Hall of Famer Ricky Steamboat. And the challenge is for a strap match at All Out. So, okay, if, let's pretend, <laughs> let's pretend Ricky the Dragon Steamboat accepts this strap match with Ricky Starks. Who are you cheering for, and who do you do you think will win? Does this count for our, our uh, prediction? If challenge? the match happens, if the match happens, yeah, Ugh. yeah. How am I supposed to to guess this off of no build whatsoever, except for Ricky beating the crap out of him with the belts? Um, well, he's like ninety years old. He's seventy. Ninety years old. Don't be rude. He's old. Don't be rude. Anyway, I'm for Ricky Starks, and I think Ricky Starks is going to win. Wow. I'll take just the opposite. I'm for Ricky Steamboat, and I think Ricky Steamboat is going to win. What would be the point of having him lose to, to Ricky Steamboat? Like, what would that do for Ricky Starks' character, who's actually a person in AEW? I thought legends were there to come and make the younger guys look good. They are, but sometimes sometimes the younger guys need an ass beating and the way Ricky Starks has been need uh, has been acting lately, I think he could use a good ass beating. So well, who better to give it to him yeah. than the fucking dragon, man. Yeah. Let's let's do it. Let's have a strap match. I mean, maybe he was supposed to look, like, weak and elderly last time we saw him. But last time we saw him, like, he looks like he couldn't beat someone with a strap. Like, and have it hurt. Like, hit them hard enough. Hmm. You know? Like, he looks like he would have, like, gentle strap hits. Yeah? Yeah, don't you think? I I don't know. I, uh, why, why are you saying that? Cause he's old. <laughs> no, I mean, wait, did you see him swing something at someone or? No, just like how he counted when he was counting in the ring, you know, and just the way he moves. Yeah. He seems ginger, gingerly. So I don't, I don't know. I just, when I think of strap match, I think of like buff, young, virile men beating the crap out of each other with a strap. I don't think of an aged person. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's very old. He's very old. He's older than Sting. And Sting is old. Sting is old. 70. Like, my parents are 70. Yeah. I couldn't see them being in a strap match. <laughs> Sorry, that's <laughs> really funny to me. <laughs> Like, your parents are in their 70s. Yeah. Do you see them in a strap match? No. Like, that's old. 70 years old. I mean, but not, more, but not Ricky Steamboat, who has kept himself up, has owned a yeah. number of gyms, who still goes to the mm -hmm. gym. I mean, my parents are arguably the healthiest they've ever been in their lives right now. Yeah, but uh, they're not Ricky Steamboat, a yeah. former NWA world champion. It's true. That'd be cool if they were. Former, I believe he was WCW World Champion as well. I, I'm going to change who I'm for. I will be for Ricky Steamboat, but I still think you got to let Ricky Starks win this. I mean, in an underhanded, cheating, I'm a terrible person kind of way. Yeah. But, I mean, just... Him losing to a 70-year-old man? Mm -hmm. Like, what good comes out of that? Well, then, 
every face can use that against him. You know? Yeah, and Ricky Steamboat gave you that ass beating, didn't he? And bam, the fans cheer, and there's some heat right there. I feel like you're turning him into the Miz. I'm not turning him the, into the Miz. Yeah. No. That's something the Miz would have happen to him. He'd get beat by a 70-year-old man, and then every time someone, a face, talks to him, that's the thing they say to get the cheers. That's like Miz heat. It's not Miz heat. It's Miz heat. Yeah. Anyways... So you are cheering for Steamboat, but picking Starks. Yeah. I'm cheering for Steamboat and picking Steamboat, if the, if it happens. We'll see if it really happens. Why would they make this announcement? You know what I would like to see happen? What? I'd like him to, to issue this challenge, and Ricky Steamboat be like, I'm not accepting, but I know someone who will, and then someone else comes out that's, like, younger and can have a good long match comes out and wrestles like in his honor or in his place you know like an rvd or someone you know hmm. i would rather see that i don't know that i want to see a ricky versus ricky strap match let's see that was ricky's yeah hmm. well those are all the matches folks for AEW all out it is a, an odd lineup, isn't it? Yeah. It is, it is odd. Uh, some of these uh, they just kind of came out of nowhere. Um, it's a strange lineup. It's a good lineup. I mean, it, it looks it looks entertaining, definitely. Uh, looks like it's going to be a great show. But it's a it's an odd lineup. Wait a minute, are there? there Oh, there's just one woman's match? Yeah, I was going to bring that up if you weren't about to. Okay. Yeah, so there's rumors that there might be another women's match on Zero Hour. Yeah. But that hasn't been confirmed yet. Oh, I actually didn't look to see. Well, no, if it was announced on Ring of Honor, it would have already been out on the internet. So we've got what, ten matches. Two, three, nine. four, five. Oh, wait, plus Ricky and Ricky. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, nine matches plus maybe a strap match. And only one of them is a women's match. Have any matches been announced for Zero Hour? Not that I've heard. Okay. So this is me as a broken record saying, Tony Khan, if you're only going to book one women's match per show, just get rid of the division, man. Just, just, you know, it's your company. You can do it if you want to. Just get rid of the division. Let these ladies... Work someplace they'll be valued, because I, I don't think you value them, and uh, it's, it, it, one match per show is not a division, it's a, it's a side show, really. Three, three men's tag matches, one women's match, one women's singles match, yeah, it's, it's, it's embarrassing. Yeah, I mean, you can't have angles, you can't have characters... One goddamn women's match, Statlander versus Soho, the only women's match on the fucking card. Which the build for that has been minimal. Yeah. Uh, We've had like what a one promo. Yeah, just disappointing. I'm disappointed in you, Tony Khan. Uh, yeah, I I know I sound like a broken record, folks. If you listen to the show, but. I uh, you know I like women's wrestling. I I don't like it. I'll be honest. I don't like it as much as men's wrestling. Uh, in general, uh, I think men men seem to be better. I don't know. I don't want to get into the whole thing here, but uh, but I do. I like women's wrestling, and I, and I like women getting more of a chance. Uh, and I think they should get more of a chance. And when there are ten matches, say on a show. I don't think it should be just one women's match, you know? Uh, two, at least two, may, probably three out of ten should be the way to go. And may, maybe even four, you know? But definitely not one, because one sends a very clear signal that you're just doing this because you think you have to. Especially when you look at, like, the backlash card. A third of the matches are women's matches. 
Payback. What did I say? Backlash. I'm sorry, Payback. Yeah, WWE Payback. A third of the ma- matches are women's matches, yeah. I mean, yes, they're only having six matches, but a third of them are women's. Yeah. So, you know, and, and... Yeah, and WWE, you know, they're not doing an A-plus job, but they're doing a hell of a lot better than AEW at yeah. building their women. Uh, and they've built women superstars. Mm-hmm. They've built convincing... Uh, Women who are stars now as wrestlers. Mm -hmm. Whose matches I look forward to more than most on the card, if not more than all on the card sometimes. Me too, yeah. A lot of times I'll look more forward to to a Charlotte Flair Mm -hmm. match than I will Mm -hmm. any other card, uh, excuse me, any other match on the card. Yeah, like I'm looking forward to the most, the Rhea Ripley match for, for Payback, you know? Yeah. So, I mean... It's possible to really love women's wrestling, and I really love women's wrestling, and I would love it if AEW would even just pretend to care. Yeah. Because at this point, like, they don't have to care. They clearly don't, but at least pretend to, you know? Yeah, I agree. Like, can you, be, can you imagine being a woman and working for that company and how undervalued you'd feel? Yeah, yeah. It's just, this, it's sad. Like, if I was a woman wrestler, I wouldn't go to AEW. If if I could go to Impact, yeah. where it's apparently they treat women much more fairly and and give them a chance, you know? Well, it depends. What do you value more? Do you, you know, money? Uh, AEW has more money than Impact. You Dude, know, I'm what a you, teacher. I don't value money. What do you value more, money or... Uh, <laughs> Being on television, you know? I, I don't so. believe in going into a profession for an income. Yeah, I hear you. So, uh... Well, folks, I, you know, I'm sorry if we sound like a broken record about the women's wrestling. We, we went into more than we usually do. Uh, but, you know, it's frustrating to see. And, and we really do think women, women's wrestlers, uh, and there are a lot of them out there. And we really do think women wrestlers should be given a chance and especially at this level, if if they are if they're good enough to be employed by you in AEW, they should be good enough to be on these shows, Tony. You know that's the thing. Yeah. Uh, so I don't get it. I don't get it. Um. All right, then uh, that's it. That's the wrap up for the card. So we got an odd show. Um. So what's going to be the match of the night? I said I said Cassidy versus Moxley for the international title. I thought you said Omega versus Takeshita. Oh, I'm sorry. I did. I did. I'm sorry. I did. I, I think the match of the I night I said is... Cassidy and Moxley is the main event. Yeah. And I said Omega versus Takeshita is the match of the night. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think FTR and the Bucks versus Bullet Club Gold is going to be the match of the night. Okay, we shall see. It, I think it'll... It could be one of those two. Um, I think those two are really the only possibilities. Cassidy and Mox... You can't write those guys off. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I forgot about that. No, Cassidy sorry. and Moxley yeah. could be. They could be, yeah. So those three, I think, are the possibilities, yeah. All right, folks. Well, we let's see. This weekend, let me let me try and wrap my head around every, everything that we're doing. So Saturday. Saturday, we're doing a Last Weekend Wrestling watch-along for WWE Payback starting at 7.00. Or 6.45, I believe, actually. Uh, And then instead of doing WWE Weekly on Saturday because of Payback, that show will be coming out on Sunday. Yes. Prior to AEW All Out. Right. So WWE Weekly will come out sometime in the afternoon, uh, Sunday afternoon. And then Sunday evening, we will be on the watch-along of Last Week in Wrestling uh, as we do do the the watch along for AEW All Out. Correct. All right. So. And and our uh this week in AEW will be on Tuesday as usual. 
Right. So, so only WW Weekly is getting a week a schedule change this week. Yeah. So wherever you listen to podcasts, make sure you subscribe and you won't miss anything. And uh, you know, I've got to hype up our uh, September ninth, ninth, right? Yeah. Our September ninth, uh, watch along. WCW Halloween Havoc 94. We're going to do the watch along. If you have Peacock or if you have a, a DVD uh, or a Blu-ray of Halloween Havoc 94 somehow or a tape, uh, you can join in on the watch along with us. Um, but so we're meeting on our YouTube channel, No Bones About Wrestling, at uh, 4.30 and then around 4.40 or so, we're going to give people time to get there. And then around 4.40 or so, we're going to press play. And uh, and then we'll, we'll all be synced up together, you know, pretty close to it. And, uh, and we'll have a good time. We're going to talk about wrestling. We're going to talk about t- the show. Talk about the past of wrestling. Talk about the present of wrestling. Probably make fun of it a bit because it was 1994 WCW. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a fun time. Uh, September 9th, 4.30 p.m. And the reason we're doing it so early, uh, I mean, compared to the holiday, is because we're doing several of these. We want to we want it to go well and do several of these leading up to Halloween. So that's why we're starting September 9th because we want to do several more Halloween Havocs. So come join us September 9th, 4.30 p.m. on our YouTube channel, No Bones About Wrestling. Fans, thank you very much. And as McFoley would say, have a nice day. Bye.